Hello and welcome to A Week in Trucks, in association with Daft Trucks. This week, Will and I argue over Scania's V8, and I grill Daft MD Ray Ashworth over breakfast. But first, we have an exciting new event to tell you about. I'm sure you'll agree that truck shows are great fun. Well, Truck and Driver is now launching its own show, Convoy in the Park, the ultimate celebration of the truck and the driver. Take a look at this. The new Scania RNS series caused quite a stir when they were launched last year. Now that they're available in right-hand drive, Will and I thought it would be a good idea to take them for a spin. But we don't always see eye to eye. Scania have invited us here today to drive their next generation trucks. And there's two to choose from. There's an R500 and an S580 with a V8 engine. Now we're gonna have a lot of fun, but the problem will be trying to decide who has which truck, because obviously we both want the V8. No. Uh, you take the V8, I'm not that fast. But it's a V8. Yeah, but I don't really see the point. The R500 will do just the same job, and it'll be cheap to run. I'll take that. But it's a V8. You have it. Fine. George doesn't get the V8. Scanning V8s are fantastic. They're the perfect driver retention tool. Every driver wants one, and I can understand why. It's a status symbol. It says, look at me, I'm sitting on a V8. I don't know why it will get so excited about V8s. 500 horsepower is more than enough. We're in England, not Sweden. It's generally flat, and we're at 44 tonnes and not 60. We must be compensating for something. Of course, one of the best things about a V8 is the performance, and you can't fault the performance of this one. Now, I've only got 80 horsepower more than George's R500, but there's an extra 400 newton metres of torque, and that counts for a lot. You wouldn't know we were running at 40 tonnes. The two what else I really like about this truck is the OptiCruise transmission, the, the all new OptiCruise. Gear changes take 0.35 of a second. That's quicker than Volvo's eye shift. And considerably quicker. It's so smooth, so precise. The 13 litre 500 is a new addition to the range, and unlike the V8, it's SCR only, so there's no need for EGR or any of that hassle. It's got plenty of power, 500 is definitely enough, but maybe the V8 will get you up to 56 a little bit quicker, but in doing so, you're going to be using a lot more fuel. The V8 gets its own distinctive interior. The splashes of red everywhere and more V8 logos you can shake a stick at. It reminds drivers that they're behind the wheel of something special. I'd like to say the best thing about the interior is the sound of the V8. But it's a bit of a letdown really. Yeah, you can hear it a little bit, but it's certainly no 143. I reckon a pair of aftermarket pipes would do the trick. I really like the new interior of the R series as well. It's really smart and feel properly plush. It's also subtle, you don't need all that shoutiness that you get in the, the V8. It's also a lot quieter, there's none of that V8 grumble coming through, it's just a nice peaceful place to be. Because there's no sun visor on the front of the truck anymore, there's no wind noise as well, so it's actually just a, a much, much quieter vehicle to be in. Now, no doubt George is going to argue that the V8 costs too much. Well, yeah, there's a price premium, but you get that back in residual values at the end. 
and they sell quickly too. You don't see these on the page as a commercial motor for very long. No doubt Will's going to make the point that the V8 has better residual values. He's probably right on that one, but I'd rather save the money up front. This is a lot cheaper to buy in the first place. So George, still not convinced the V8 is the way to go? As far as I'm concerned, 500 horsepower is plenty. That's 10 horsepower per tonne, and you've still got 60 in reserve. Fair point, but it's a V8. Look, I do understand that V8s are desirable, but I really don't get it, and most of them just end up pulling containers out of Felixstowe. I think if you're gonna get a V8, why not just go the whole hog and get a really powerful one? What, you're talking 730? No, 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 750, 780, 800 even? Come on, Scania, get your act together. Give us what we want. Finally, something we both agree on. One thing we didn't know when we filmed that was just how much the price of a V8 is. The difference between an S580 and an R500 is a lot more than you might think. Prepare yourself, it's 17 grand. Despite that though, Will thinks it's money well spent. What do you think? Breakfast is the most important meal of the day especially when you're facing questions from a week in trucks first thing in the morning. We met up with DAF MD Ray Ashworth at Jack's Cafe on the A5 for a new series called Grilled in the Cafe. Issue that uh, the general public needs and does need to, but I, I need to have a better understanding of what we do and what we are about in, in supporting the, uh, the, the, the general economy of the, of the UK. So I would really like to go out and be an ambassador to explain what we do and how we do it. And do you know one other thing I would do is uh, the motorway signs at the moment, they give us information about the don't drink and drive. Uh, why don't you use those to say, do you know that this truck is limited to 90 kilometres an hour? and then you could give information about trucks on those overhead signs and the general public would be aware and then you could add other things to about truck driving. This is a good question. Um, one of the readers here says, I'd buy a DAF if only you had a more powerful engine. Why do you limit yourself to 510 horsepower? I think horsepower obviously is important to certain people and, and yes, you're right, we limit ourselves at 510, but what we try to focus on is the torque of the engine because the torque gives you what you need to get in the pull away and get up to speed. Uh, and at 510, that's enough torque to pull away 44 tons at the speed you need to do. Which rival manufacturer do you respect the most and why? I respect all manufacturers because uh, first and foremost, what we do is, uh, is very much focus on what we think our customers need and what is right for our customers. But you cannot ignore all the other manufacturers and what they do, and by ignoring them, you ignore them at your peril. So, as I say, all uh, individuals, all are different, and I do respect all of them. If you left work tomorrow and DAF gave you a truck and a trailer as a leaving present, what would you do with it? Uh, I would do uh, what I, I've always had passion about, which is uh, go around to schools, go into colleges, universities, and promote the industry. It's you know what we're about. Uh, to encourage uh, school leavers, young people, to join this industry, because it's got massive potential. And people just think of it as truck driving. It's far wider than that, and far wider for, for in terms of career. And of course, you know, who knows? They could come into this industry and become the managing director of DAF trucks. Bit of a brand ambassador then. Yes, absolutely. During your time at Deaf Trucks, what has been your greatest achievement and the thing you're most embarrassed about? So my greatest achievement, gosh, I, if I go back in recent history, I think probably uh, having got through the global recession, uh, 2008, 9, 10, 11, forced into 12, uh, coming through that with uh, an, an intact dealer network that we pulled all the way through, but most importantly we pulled through with all our customers. And our customers survived with that, which was great, and hopefully what our contribution was helping them survive for those four or five years. My greatest embarrassment, um, I'm not sure I've been embarrassed about anything recently, but probably the most recent one was trying to park the truck this morning. 
of course, before you arrived, I parked it perfectly uh, without any problems. And then when you were videoing me, I parked it. I had I think four attempts to get it parked next to the uh, the Jack Richards exit. But managed uh, to do it safely eventually. Thank you very much. Okay. Well, nice to You've been watching A Week in Trucks, and as always, don't forget to like the page or subscribe to the channel. See you next time.